Next up, we've got Ari Lax versus Brad Bonin. Let's take a look at what Brad's working with here. It looks like he's on just straight up Celestia. Ooh, March of the Multitudes. That's a nice one. It's a pretty nice one. Also has a Knight of Autumn in there. Oh, uh, I see that. Snuggle Beast down on the six drop slot. Yeah, that's another very nice one. Uh, Siege Worm, good way of breaking through. Pretty big problem for Brad here. Ooh. Celestia decks, you want to get on the board early, and here he is with three only three creatures. Or, yeah, three Hunted Witness as one drops. That Oof. card is not really playable. No, I like this a little better from yeah. Ari, the double healer's hawk start. Now, one thing that Ari's deck is kind of interested, interesting for here is that he did value pure creature curve over almost everything, including kind of junkers like Wary, Okapi, and Wild Saratok making the cut. These aren't really the cards that you look for when you're playing these type of decks, but uh, he's running them all. He's running a... I'd call it a cabs deck, cards that affect the board state. It's mm -hmm. basically only those. Every card in his deck is either a creature, a pump spell, or a removal spell. That's it. He's not fussing around. Ari Lax is looking to get the beat down on. Yeah, Ari's, uh, Ari's deck has the ability to make big healer's hawks. And uh, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but one of the drafts that I won in this format was a draft where I just had a whole bunch of healer's hawks and iron shell beetles and just made big healer's hawks and rode them to victory. And uh, it, I think that's one of the better things you can do when you're in these Celestia colors. So Luminous Bond's going to take out this uh, four power creature. You know, four power on the third turn, that's a lot to contend with. Uh, Brad's still going to be able to get in with this first striker, but uh, Ari's okay with taking two at a time. The beats keep on coming. And actually getting to use the mentor ability there on the uh, patrol. That's pretty nice. And uh, Brad's going to be able to do that with some level of consistency here, that, thanks to having three Hunted Witness in the deck. Hunted Witness, you know, not the most exciting card in this format, but uh, when you have multiple copies of patrol, uh, it's nice to have somewhere to put those mentor counters. Take hard here from Ari Lax. Playing defense, but guess what? There's a take hard on the other side here for Brad Bonin, and that first strike does it. Oh! <laughs> Re-raise here from Ari Lax. He's got Might of the Masses for another <laughs> plus two, plus two. So it ends up just being a two for two as far as cards go, but Ari maintains a stronger board position as a result, and bang! Gets a slam Siege Worm here on turn five. Moo. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah, Siege Worm, uh, again, a card I've been pretty impressed with. Green hasn't been a color that's impressed me the most, but uh, I continue to like Siege Worm, as I always have. You like rhinos or worms better? I feel like... I feel like rhinos are obviously better than worms, right? I to believe. Siege. I believe that you're correct, but uh, I can post no evidence. <laughs> but I think you're right. Boy, <laughs> Brad Bowen curving out with the big finisher here. World Soul Colossus. Is it a nine yeah. nine? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice seed for yeah, yeah. a nine ounce bone and rib ribeye. You know, wow. like <laughs> that's ridiculous. He's going to use up all of our dice in the feature match area on this thing. Oh, it's only seven. It's a sad time. Yeah, you're right. It's only seven, seven, yeah. nine mana, but only a seven, seven. Still, the key here bigger than Siege Worm mm -hmm. by a lot. Now, yeah, now if, if Ari though ends up grabbing one of his. No, I'm not even going to bother because he doesn't have it. His hand's empty now. I was going to say Illuminous Bonds would do well for him there, but he does have enough beef on the ground at this. Uh 
Colossus is going to be held back, but the Parhelion Patrol times two are putting a very real clock on Ari Lax, and wow, he even found perhaps his best card there, Light of the Legion, and it was too late because the Parhelion Patrols would just finish him off anyway. Yeah, uh, if he had drawn that one turn earlier, it might have been good enough, but they're too little too late. Oftentimes, uh, World Soul Colossus underperforms, actually. It's a card that, you know, on the surface, you'd expect to be maybe better than Siege Worm, but uh, the fact that it does not have Trample can often be uh, a deal-breaker. Might of the Masses. We've seen it played this game, and we saw it played last game. This is a card that uh, has really overperformed for me in these earlier turns. You get to just use it as if it were any other pump spell. You know, it just lets things straight up a little bit. In the later turns of the game, it's just oftentimes a way to win the game outright when you have nothing but a bunch of 1-1s one and you're facing off against a, an opponent who has significantly more powerful cards. Parhelion Patrol looks really nice against Ari Lax as well. Remember, he's running a couple of the Healer's Hawk and the Patrol just nicely bigger than that. Also, many of Ari's creatures do their work on the ground, so the Parhelion Patrol will often have the ability to attack freely. This is interesting now. Ari Lax is sending in the District Guide. Will Brad call what could be a bluff? It's super likely that Ari has the pump spell, and you don't want to lose Parhelion Patrol, but Ari knows it. Oh, and he's even got his own Parhelion Patrol to back it up because Brad decided to take it. Boy, you saw that pause, though, from Brad. He's just like, oh, you would super attack here even if you didn't have it. I yeah. know it. <laughs> I know you would always make this attack. That's right, and that makes it very tempting to block, but, boy, losing your Parhelion Patrol to, like, a one-mana combat trick, that feels bad. Yeah, big man disadvantage there. So, generous stray. Yeah, it's a kitty cat. Yeah. Brings lizards. We met Eduardo Sajgalik's cat last night. Mm -hmm. It's a great cat. Generous stray, uh, a card that I'm not in love with. I'm in love with it. Ooh, look at this. Now we've got another face-off here with these combat tricks. Attack. And Brad says, I'll block. You want to be the first one to blink here? You go for it, buddy. And Ari says, nah, dog, I'm good. I'm just going to play out this healer's <laughs> hog. <laughs> and, the, uh, and the blade instructor before passing the turn back with no mana available. Now we get to actually find out if Brad has a combat trick. Because if he just jams here, then well, he probably does. But it looks like he doesn't. But instead, he's got Luminous Bonds to take out the opposing Parhelion Patrol. And this is really good for him. Now he can start attacking with his Parhelion Patrol. And he even gets in there with the Generous Stray. How do you feel about it as a 2-3? That's a little bit better. Indeed. His Parhelion Patrol's quite good in Brad's deck. We saw he, had, you know, he has so many hunted witnesses that it's hard to imagine a world where he doesn't have somewhere to drop that Mentor counter. Ari, uh, looks like he has a Luminous Bonds in hand. This means he's going to get to start growing this hawk. Common theme we've talked about throughout the course of the weekend. Bane Slayer Hawk. This is, a, this is a huge swing here in Ari Lax's favor. If left un, untouched here, this attack step is a big one for Ari. And look at this. The Healer's Hawk is there. Oh, but this is going to be a big blowout. Crushing Canopy not to kill the hawk. But instead to kill the Luminous Bonds and bang, right back at you, Brad Bonin. Ari Lax has Might of the Masses to win the fight and keep his Healer's Hawk alive, get the Parhelion Patrol off the battlefield. And gain six in the process. Wow, that was a huge swing for Ari. Siege Worm is a follow-up for Bonin, but the damage may be done here because this Healer's Hawk padding Ari Lax's life total beautifully here. He's up to 22 and still has that nice clean attack in the air as well. Woo. Okay, Hiller's Hawk is certainly a nice one. 
It's, it's a funny card because it's not a card you'd expect to be a nice one on the surface. And whoa, we talked about Baneslayer Hawk. Here is a, uh, an actual Lyra Hawk. Now this is a 5-4 uh, a Vigilance Lifelink Flyer that Ari Lax has put together thanks to that Candlelight Vigil. Card off the sideboard. We talked about this when we watched him drafting also, that uh, he could be bringing Candlelight Vigil out of the board. This is a card that, uh, especially in conjunction with those Healer's Hawks, just has the potential to be game-breaking against an opponent that doesn't have a ton of removal. And Ari's fine to just take five. I mean, he, he gets five life for free every turn just by, you know, tapping on this bird he has on the board. Both of our players here are sitting at 9 and 1. Brad revealing the card in his hand. That was the one that he found with the Sumala Woodshaper. Yeah, so with this attack, if, uh, if Brad doesn't have anything to do, uh, you know, he's presenting lethal damage if either of those threes get in, so it forces Brad to block both of them, and then, you know, he's able to just run away with it. Feels extremely difficult for Brad to come back from this point. Well, the Rock Charger could buy him a turn, and then he does have the World Soul Colossus, so lots of pressure on his draw step to find an answer for the Hawk, but now, if he can, he actually has a chance to, to come back in this game, maybe. Yeah, I mean, for, for Brad to win this one, I imagine something has to happen like a Swamp uh, find finality. Well, can't he just do like a Luminous Bonds or something? Uh, that, well, there are two three-power guys on the other side of the table, so even if he deals with the Hawk, he'll only have one blocker there. He had two blockers. He had oh, the he's Siege, got, he got Siege the World Worm Soul. and the World Soul Colossus. You're right. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah, so you're right. I think so he was like nuts. ready to stabilize that board, but it's tough when you need to draw such a specific narrow yeah. band of cards, you know, something that can kill the healer's hawk there. And he wasn't able to do so. So that means that we're going to move into game number three. And it looks like Ari has a, a much more focused plan as a Selesna drafter here. Uh, Brad told me before this draft that he only drafted the set twice. Uh, you see a lot of wood shapers in Brad's deck. You see a lot of bigger spells, whereas Ari really wanted to be the most aggressive deck that he could possibly be. Curious to see how that goes. But the Night of Autumn here for Brad Bonin, a dominating early play on the battlefield. It's just huge. Yeah, 4 3 is. Yeah, 4 3 quite for large. 3 mana is no joke. And there is that wood shaper, as you mentioned. You know, Woodshaper is a fine magic card. It sticks around to block an attack or use Convoke, and it can help you find not only threats, but also you can find some of your answers if you're playing white. Yeah, uh, we talked about Luminous Bonds. Mm -hmm. Both of these players are using that as a, a key form of removal in their Selesna deck. Yeah, Conclave Tribunal also findable. So it's a fine card, but it is a little clunky, right? It's the type of thing that, for example, Ari Lax is very much trying to not do. He doesn't want to have a turn where he pays four mana and the grand total of two, two power and one toughness is what he gets for it. He wants to affect the board now. But in the meantime, perhaps the higher power level from Bonin getting there. And look at this bold attack from him just sending both creatures, in, including a 2-1 into the 4-4 Vigilance Rosemane Centaur and putting Ari Lax to the test while he's tapped out. Yeah, Ari uh, had some mana troubles earlier. Uh, this puts him in a position where... I Brad, you know, he may end up two for winning himself here by using a take heart on that wood shaper to trade it with the centaur. And even if Brad does that, he's still not really behind in terms of cards because that wood shaper replaced itself as a different card. So this is a good way to uh, punish Ari for having not used his mana on each turn. So Ari's going to go for a trade rather than gobbling up the Woodshaper, and it looks like that may have happened here, or maybe Brad just simply announced a combat trick of some sort. No, yeah, he did. <laughs> They're playing extremely quickly here. Yeah, Brad explained what he had done while he was having Drinking a sip of water. seltzer. Yeah, 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 exactly. So <laughs> it was take heart to win the combat fight against the Rosemane Centaur, and then he followed up with Rock Charger. So... 
good stuff here from Brad Bonin. Ari Lax forced to play the defensive role here, not really where he wants to be. Luminous Bonds is going to keep the uh, Knight of Autumn at bay. But the Rock Charger plus the Wood Shaper can start chipping in for three damage a turn minimum. Actually, the Rock Charger is going to stay home, which means we're going to see something big. And yeah, there it is. Siege Worm for Brad Bonin. They can't all be rhinos. Oh, but look at that. Light of the Legion now from Ari Lax. And Brad Bonin can't wait wow. to cast Illuminous Bonds in his hand and crack in. And this is huge. This one's going to be over real quick unless Ari can find some way to stabilize this board. Land number seven hits for him, but he's down to eight. Flying Siege Worms coming in. Parhelion Patrol and his own Rock Charger. But look at that. Not like this head over there for Ari Lax. <laughs> and this one may be just about in the books. Oh, yeah. That's really nasty. Intrusive Pack Beast to clear away and get him down to one. Excuse me. Two life. Means that this is going to be really tough now for Ari. That Pack Beast as a Curve Topper is really nasty because not only does it get you in that big attack, but he's got a lethal threat at the standby as well. So Ari is just showing Brad what he's got. He says, yeah. I, can, I can Candlelight Vigil up a Healer's Hawk, but can I even survive if I do that? you got to figure he can, right? He can survive for a turn, but I don't know how... Yeah, he's not actually at eight, though, right? Like no, that I, I think he's got to be at, like, three, I think right? he's at two, right? Five, three, he took six, six last yeah, yeah, turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should be at two here. Okay, it finally it updated. And he is, in fact, at two. So, uh, Brad attacks with everybody. Well, he just did, so we don't yeah. have to... <laughs> Yeah, and this is a great block from Ari because that lifelink is going to put him up to six here. Then he'll take five damage from that Siege Worm. This will put him down to one, and it looks like that Pack Beast is only going to take out that Patrol. This Healer's Hawk is going to remain on the table, and this means Ari is going to get to attack back with that Healer's Hawk on the following turn, put himself back up to five, and then he needs to find an answer to the Siege Worm and potentially get his way back into this game. Does he not lose the, the Hawk here? No, I think he, the oh, hawk he's is just, just gonna blocking block the, the rock charger. charger. Oh. Yeah. So the, here what we're going to see is we're going to see the... Uh, yeah, this is a yeah. window of hope. I mean, Brad needed anything to win the game there, but he didn't have it. Oh, baby. Yeah. Ari Lax, 20 to 1, looking for a comeback. Yeah, and now getting to jump back up to uh, to 5 here. He needs something. He, he really needs to keep adding to the board to realistically have a chance to win. Well, he, st he can chump the Siege Worm here, and he'll just take four, which will once again put him down to one here. Uh, he could also, I mean, he could also just, I guess only the Siege Worm's coming in. So yeah, he just so chumps the Siege Worm, and he... he take two. Oh, does, does he? Does he have Might of the Masses? He does. That's plus three, plus three. Wow. And that's enough to eat the Siege Worm. Yeah. That's six toughness. Wow. Ari Lax, with the might of the masses, just jumped back up to 12 life. And now it's just a generous stray for Brad Bonin. Dude, he might come back here. Yeah, Healer's Hawk wears things very well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Get that thing a modeling contract. Did he just, uh, <laughs> did he just draw a statue as well? I think Ari might have drawn status statue. <gasps> he did, and that's going to unlock Light of the Legion, and the pendulum has fully swung back in Ari Lax's direction. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, Brad Bonin down to nine here. What's I mean, seven here? Didn't he get a Light of the Legion trigger there? Oh, it looks like he missed his trigger. He didn't get the Mentor trigger? <laughs> I mean, it, it's still looking quite good for Ari, but... Yeah, I, I believe he missed the Mentor trigger. Though yeah. it, it ends up not really making a difference. Uh, he would have had one additional life, the Indrik. That is it. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, it's just the one life. You're right, Jake. Yeah. 
All right, not going to miss this one, though. He's attacking for not quite, oh, no, excuse me, five, six, seven. It is exactly lethal. Yeah. So this is a Parhelion Patrol forced to chump, or it can block the Rock Charger and live a turn. But and Ari back to 20 now. That He was at one. Ari Lax putting on a show. He draws Rosemane Centaur. Brad Bonin must be yeah. shell-shocked. How in the world did this game slip away from him? At one with no cards left in his hand. Unbelievable. Ari Lax wins the match two games to one. Improves to 10-1. <laughs> what a sick turn of events for Ari. That was exciting stuff for Ari Lax. Wow, that was Brad awesome. Bonin must be like, I could, I had to have been able to get one damage in somewhere, right? Like, you know, it's one of those games that you want to go back and watch. And lucky for him, he, he could actually have the chance to do that, too, because it happened to be on uh, the recording. Yeah, and I think there was a really key turn there mm. uh, when Ari was at one, and he cast the Candlelight Vigil on the Healer's Hawk and then passed the turn, and Brad decided to attack with his whole team. Uh, if Brad had just attacked with the Siege Worm there, uh, then I believe Ari would have been in a position where the only block that he had that let him survive was to block with that hawk and other things. And then that would have let Brad take that Baneslayer Angel essentially off the table, and then he could have continued to play out the cards from his hand and uh, perhaps been victorious. Probably Maybe been victorious. So. And that was, that was a really big decision point in that game. And, uh, you know, sometimes... You're there. You're game three. You're playing in the feature match here. You're X1. You're at this Grand Prix. You just top baited your last Grand Prix. You want to do it again. And, uh, you know, you have to be tight 100% of the time to do it all the time. Yeah, that was crazy. All right, well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, though, we'll have more live slash time walk magic from Montreal. We'll see you in a bit.